Now, if you had a contact management before, more than likely you've already exported your contacts. They may not look this clean on your CSV file. Maybe it's got a bunch of jumbled information. It could be something you exported from Square or Stripe or even Google Contacts. Either way, the system is going to read the very first row as the field name. I'm gonna show you a sample of an Excel spreadsheet right here. We exported some mock data. One of the things that I recommend doing, no matter what your data is, is making sure that you have a column for your first name, your last name, your email, and your phone number. Let me scroll down and show you the CSV. So this isn't a very big list. It's not 20,000 people. This is a list of about 200 people. So this is really easy to go through and know which ones are leads, which ones are customers. And you might, if you have more data, like 20,000, you might wanna separate them, create one that has leads and then one that's customers. That way you can import each piece of data effectively. A great example is if you're in HVAC, let's say, and you offer plumbing services for heating and air conditioning, you might wanna have a list that says plumbing customers, and you may want to have a list that says HVAC customers. Maybe you're a restaurant and you have restaurant customers, but you also do catering. So you might want to have a catering list and a restaurant list. You may want to organize inside of your Excel, Google worksheet, or whatever worksheet that you're working on. It should be a CSV file in order to import. I recommend adding these two fields. One is the type and one is the tag. And this is going to be really important because type is the custom field for down here when I showed you contact type is going to be a lead or a customer. And then of course, if you already wanna have tags for your customer, maybe we'll tag them. So in this particular case, let's tag them and let's say catering and we'll add the type as customer. So this is a full list of all my customers and they all have purchased catering from me could be catering, like I said, anything. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to go ahead and copy this all the way down till we get to the 200. And now I have this entered. If you wanted to tag them more than one tag, you can do catering. And let's say they are a restaurant customer. So you could do catering or you could do catering and then do a comma to add an additional tag. Just make sure you don't leave a space between it. So it shows catering and restaurant. I'm just going to split this up to give us a couple of little pieces of data. These are catering and restaurant customers, and these are catering customers. I'm going to go ahead and hit File and hit Save As. Be sure that you save it as a CSV document. Save. And now we've got our document. So what we want to do now is import this. So we're going to go to our Contacts tab. And where are we going to go? we're going to go to the icons to import the contact data. When I select import contact data, you're going to see these three little steps. We're going to upload, we're going to map the fields, and then we're going to give it some detail. I'm going to go ahead and click on upload right here. We're going to pull in my mock data right here, and we'll go ahead and hit next. So number one is uploading my data. Now we need to map the fields. So you can see right here, first name, last name, email, phone number, type, and tag. And look how easy it read it. Now, what's interesting is if it didn't have, or if it said something different, maybe from your original export, you could easily select the option where you want them to go. It could be a custom field or it could be something else. So you can easily map the field. When you type in type and tag, this does this automatically for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And you can hit cancel, you can go back if you didn't like the import, if it didn't look right, but you can see the sample data of the first one coming in. I'm gonna hit next and now it's going to, guess what? name my bulk action. So we'll just do this bulk action customer. Right here it says create a list of contacts from the import. And when I click over here, if I want to create a list, I would check that. I could easily add tags specifically to this, but I'm going to call this my customer list. And then down here in tags, we would definitely want to put import. And I like to do this that way I can go through and find them. Now, in our particular case, we're going to add new and update existing contact records. So you want to make sure you have this first one set up. If you were looking for contacts, you could decide, is it 
which email do they have? Let's keep their email. Let's keep their phone. More than likely, you're going to be importing in your first original set of contacts. But if you wanted to update contact records, you could select add new or update. If you already have people in there, then this is where you do add new and update. So you can select whichever one you like, email, or we can select none. I'm going to select none because this is a blank database. We're going to go ahead and hit submit. So now we've got our import smart list name. because We're going to create a list from the import. We've also tagged these as an import. And now we're going to hit submit and we will wait here while it processes. Now you can also click on right here to go into bulk actions to see your import happening right here. Now you'll see your smart list is now your customer list. Look at this, customers are right here. That's where your 200 records got imported. We have our import, we have our catering, and we should have our restaurant tags as well. Let's keep going through. Let's go to tag, let's type restaurant, and look at this, I can create a new with 23 records and hit save and you'll see right here where I've got the customers the all 200 came in and they are now a smart list so they all came in how do we check when we go to bulk actions you'll see that we did a bulk action right here where you can details to see what the bulk action was. You can also see the status right here to see that all 200 were created. Now you can see we have a customer list and we have our website leads. Let's go back to all and let's say I wanted to break it down. We had restaurants and catering and then we had catering. So we know customers, the bulk of these were catering. Let's create a new filter and let's call this tag just the restaurant customers. So I'm going to select restaurant. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to save as a smart list. We'll call these restaurant. And now I've got all the customers that are customers. And then I have my restaurant customers, all tagged restaurant with the import. You could even break this down even more. You'll see right here if it's if it was just a restaurant only, you could come in here and say tag is restaurant, tag is catering, tag, see this one says tag is catering, or it'll say more tags. So you can easily come in and break these tags down. Now I like the import for when you first start out because what we did was we imported in all those 200 customers. Once you've gone through and you see that everybody's in and it looks great, then what we can do is we can actually go to that customers list. And remember earlier, I showed you bulk tax. I'm gonna check this. I'm gonna select all 200 records. And right here, I'm gonna remove the tag. And the tag I'm gonna remove is going to be the import tag. Once I'm done, I can say import tag removal, and then I can remove all of the tags that say import, and there they went. And guess where I'll find that? In my bulk actions after my import tag. I can view the details of the bulk status. You can see that the tag removal, the bulk was tag remove the tag, and that 200 people were successfully removed. And that's how easy it is to go in and set up import, export, and bulk options with your tagging. Remember that your import is always going to try to map the fields to what is on the first column of your worksheet. So I really recommend organizing this in an organized fashion so that way they map easily and effectively. And again, don't forget to add your type and your tag so that way they come in as customers or leads into your system appropriately. If you have too much data, feel free to break it down and do multiple imports with multiple lists until you feel comfortable managing, whether it be a 20,000 or a 50,000 list of customers and prospects or leads and organizing this. And of course, as time goes on, you'll be creating more and more smart lists based on your programs, your products, your offerings, and other things that you might like to tag, like by location or other things that will help you segment your audience. So that way, when you want to send an email just to your restaurant customers, you can select those customers, check the box, and send them a text or an email.
all within your contacts list view to use bulk actions to send out that information right away quickly or schedule it inside of your contacts list view bulk action campaigns. This would be a great time to go and work on importing your current customers, your potential customers, or pulling the information from the data of your payment processor, your Google contacts, but let's start getting those contacts in so you can also have them in one single place. In